everybody. So today we are doing angles and algebra notes part two. Uh, so part one was dealing with complementary and supplementary angles and today part two we're working with vertical angles and angles around a point. Um, so starting with vertical angles just to kind of refresh your memory on what they are. Um, when two lines intersect each other at a point they form four different angles. So the word four is going to go in here. So you'll see one, two, three, and four angles are formed when two lines are intersecting. Um, but just the angles that are opposite from each other are the vertical angles. So up here, angles one and angles three are across from each other. So those would be vertical angles along with angles two and four. Um, so just to kind of label those, one and three are vertical, and then maybe in a different color, two and four are vertical. So they look like they would be equal, and we kind of have had this assumption that they are equal, but I want us to be able to prove that they are um, so that we know for sure that they are the same and not just kind of going by looking at them. So in this picture, if angle one is 30 degrees, then let's use what we know about supplementary angles, what we know for a fact is true, to show that vertical angles are equal. So if angle one is 30 degrees, if you kind of block off these other two, you'll see that angle one and two are supplementary. They form a straight line. So if angle one is 30, angle two would have to be 150 degrees in order for them to be supplementary. Again, that doesn't tell us anything about vertical angles, um, but now that I know angle two is 150, again, if I block off this portion, you'll see that angles two and three also form a straight line. So if angle two is 150, that means angle three would have to be 30 because they form a straight line and have to add up to 180. And then same thing, again, if I kind of block these off, angles three and four are also supplementary. They form a straight line. So if three is 30 degrees, then four would also have to be 150. So that just goes to show and prove that the vertical angles, the ones across from each other, have to be equal just with what we know about supplementary angles. Um, and then to fill in these last blanks, vertical angles are congruent, um, which is just kind of a fancy geometry word for equal, um, which is, again, something we've kind of talked about, but given what we know about supplementary, we can prove or show that they are equal no matter what. So now to bring in the algebra. Um, like we just said, we know that vertical angles are equal. Okay, They don't add up to anything, so we're not going to create an equation like that. But what we do know is that they equal each other. So from there, we can set up an equation. So I know that 74 equals 2x. So there's an equation that we can set up. 2x equals 74. I just like to flip it around the other way. From there, we can solve that equation. Divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 37. And here, I don't really need to find the missing angle measure. I knew that this needed to be 74. I just was using that fact to figure out what x needed to be. All right, moving on to here. Again, I'm given these two angles, since they're vertical, I know that they're equal. So I'm going to set up that equation. I know that 2x plus 6 needs to equal 96. So we can use this equation to solve for x. I would subtract 6 on both sides to give us 2x equals 90. And then from there, we would divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 45. 
again, x equals 45. I knew that this angle needed to be 96, and in order for it to be 96, x would be 45. So again, I'm not finding the missing angles, I'm just figuring out what x needed to be. Okay, again, we have um, some information given to us that are vertical angles. So again, I can set those equal to each other. So my equation would be 11y minus 36 equals 63. And from there, we can solve for y. I know this needs to equal 63. Let's figure out what y needs to be in order to get that. So I'm going to add 36 on both sides, leaving me with 11y equals 99 and divide both sides by 11 to get y equals 9. And that's it. And then this last one, again, we are given the information for the vertical angles. So that means these things need to be equal. I need this to equal 131. So let's figure out what x needs to be to get there. So 4x plus 7 needs to equal 131. Let's solve this to figure out x. Start by subtracting 7 on both sides, leaving us with 4x equals uh, 124. And divide both sides by 4 to get x equals 124 divided by 4 is 31. So x needs to be 31. Again, that's not any of the angle measures. That's, what just, that's just what x needs to be in order for this to equal 131 like we know it should. All right. So that is angles, vertical angles with algebra. Again, just knowing the fact that vertical angles are equal um, helps us to set up the equation and solve for the variable. Now on the back, we are going to look at angles around a point and connecting that with our algebra. So in this diagram here, angles one, two, three, and four, they all share a common vertex. And when the angles share a vertex, and they we're talking about all of the angles around that vertex, we call them angles around a point. We're talking about the angles all the way around a point. The angles in a full rotation or a full circle, as we should know, is 360 degrees. So, so far we've had complementary add up to 90, supplementary add up to 180, and now these angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Um, so we'll use that knowledge to solve some problems that have angles that look like this, angles that go all the way around a point. So this one, we're given all of the angles except this one. So kind of like when we started with complementary and supplementary, we don't really need to set up an equation per se. We can kind of just do the calculations. You could set up an equation, um, and maybe I'll, I'll show you both ways, but it's not necessary. Okay, all of these added together um, equal, let's find that out, 73 plus 150 plus 65 plus 30 equals, I did that over here, equals 318. So all of those added together equal 318. So this angle A needs to get me up to 360 degrees. So what I can do is take 360 minus what we already have, and that should leave me with angle A, what I need to have left over, and that would be 42. So angle A would be 42 degrees. Another way, like I said, you could set up an equation and say that this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus A equals 360, and then solve that equation. Um, but it's really not necessary. Uh, it will be for these two. Um, so for these next two, you do need to set up an equation because we have two missing angles. 
So all of these added together are going to add up to 360. So that's my equation that I can create. 99 plus 2y plus 65 plus 109 plus y equals 360. Um, and maybe you guys could do the combining beforehand so that it doesn't take up half your page like it did mine. Um, because we can combine the like terms, we can combine 99, 65, and 109. And then we also can combine 2y and y. And when I do that, I get 3y, 2 plus 1y is 3y. And then 99, 65, and 109 add up to 273. And then that's going to equal 360. And now we have a more manageable equation that we can solve. Um, subtract 273 on both sides to get 3y equals 87. And then from there, divide both sides by 3 to get y equals 87 divided by 3 is 29. So if y equals 29, then that means this angle here is 29 degrees, and this one is 2 times y, so 2 times 21, or 2 times 29, which is 58. All right. And then we have this last one. Again, they are angles around a point. So when I add all of those together, it should give us 360. So when I add 2x plus 3x plus 4x, I should equal 360. All of these are like terms. 2x plus 3x plus 4x all added together is 9x. And that still equals 360. And then from there, you just need to divide both sides by 9 to get x equals 360 divided by 9 is 40. So if that's the value for x, then we'll plug it in to find these angle measures. This top one would be 2 times x, so 2 times 40 is 80 degrees. 3 times x, or 3 times 40, is 120 degrees. And 4 times x, or 4 times 40, is 160. So there you have it. Um, that's how you solve problems for angles around a point. Um, kind of similar to what we did with complementary and supplementary, but now they are adding up to 360 instead of 90 or 180. So if you are in regular, you can stop watching there. Uh, accelerated, we're gonna go through some more challenging problems um, that have more than one variable. And we'll kind of talk about uh, how we figure these ones out. Again, they're kind of just like, a puzzle. They're kind of just like missing pieces that you have to find and sometimes when you're doing a puzzle you want to start around the outside um, and figure out the border. Um, I don't know really where I'm going with this metaphor but that's kind of the same thing here. You have to figure out where you need to start um, so that you can finish putting all the pieces together. So really we're just going to find one variable at a time and um, take it from there. Find what you can. So in this one, I can't find this variable n yet. I actually need to find m first. And if I block out all this extra stuff, 149 and m are supplementary, so those should add up to 180. So if those need to add up to 180, then m would need to be 180 minus 149, which is 31. So M is going to be 31 degrees. I can use that to find this angle. This angle is 3 times M. So 3 times M would give me this angle. So 3 times 31, because M is 31, would be 93, making this angle 93 degrees. So then the last thing that I need to figure out is the value for the letter N. And again, if you just kind of block all of this out up here, all three of these are 
supplementary. So if I take 180 minus these two, minus 93 plus 70, then that will leave me with angle N. Um, 93 plus 70 is 163, and 180 minus 163 is 17. So angle N is 17 degrees. So that's kind of how you would find all of the missing pieces there. Um, let's go ahead and move on to this one. Here you'll notice we didn't really have to set up any equations. Here you will have to. Here um, we're going to have to start by finding B first. Um, we're going to have to use this 80 to figure out what B is here. Um, so this 4B, you might notice that it needs to be 100 degrees. So you can maybe figure it out that way. Um, or you could set up an equation that it says that these added together form a straight line, so they need to add up to 180. So 4B plus 80 needs to equal 180. Or maybe you knew that just this 4B needs to equal 100. Um, maybe you just jumped right to that step, or maybe you could do all that in your head and just know that B would be 25 in order for all of that to be true. Um, but regardless, these would be the steps either way. Here you would subtract 80 on both sides and get here. Here you would divide both sides by 4 to get here. So B equals 25, so that gives me this angle, which is nice. And this angle is 100, like we already said. So now we really just need to find angle C. Um, C and this 25 are supplementary, so they should add up to 180. So I can just do 180 minus 25 to get C, and that would be 155. So angle C is 155 degrees. All right, and then lastly, over here, um, I would probably start by finding angle Q. Angle Q and 152 are supplementary, so Q would be 180 minus 152, which is 28. So Q is 28 degrees. I could use that to find 3 times Q. So 3 times 28 would give me this angle, and 3 times 28 is 84. So that angle would be 84 degrees. And to find this last angle, angle R, um, you can maybe notice that these are vertical angles. These two lines are intersecting, so this would also be 28, just like Q was. Um, or you could also use the fact that these three angles are supplementary um, and get 28 that way. Um, no matter what, you should get to the, the right numbers. All right, so like I said, finding the missing angle measures is kind of just like putting a puzzle together. You have to figure out which pieces go where um, by using prior knowledge. Hopefully you're able to do okay with that and your turn to start practicing.